Sensec Live and What's Your Perspective radio show. I'm Neil Haley, uh, Inside Sales and also host of What's Your Perspective radio show on the Total Media Network. And I'm excited first to welcome to the show my good friend. He is uh, he's a, an RSM sales manager in the Midwest region, Bob Brown. Bob, thanks for stopping by to What's Your Perspective radio show on Lensec Live. Thank you, Neil. It's good to be here again. I'm Bob Brown, and I do represent the Midwest region for the company, uh, which is a very large region. It goes from uh, pretty much uh, the Ohio River Valley all the way up through the uh, northern boundaries of Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin, so upper peninsula of Michigan. So big patch there to cover. Fortunate to have Matt Vitos here with us today. Matt is with Elliott Data Systems. And uh, they are our partner in the Missouri area, uh, specifically St. Louis. So Matt, you can say a few words about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Matt Bytus here with Elliott Data Systems. I'm vice president of sales. Um, as Bob mentioned, we have an uh, office in St. Louis. We also have another office down in the, the Mid-South region in Memphis, Tennessee specifically. So we sell and support um, uh, security solutions all throughout the Midwest and Mid-South in a variety of markets. Healthcare, education, um, government, local, county, state, et cetera. So we're really excited to be a uh, part of the conversation today. Well, excited as well, Matt. How long how long you've been with the company for? Uh, next uh, in the next two weeks, it'll be 16 years. So I started wow. right out of college. Wow, awesome. So specifically we're our topic is going into more of the security end of things. What does a security integrator do? Uh, yeah, so what we like to do is uh, meet, sit down with our, our current clients, prospective clients to really understand their needs. And then, um, you know, from there, we, we always like to take an unbiased approach to everything that we do. So a lot of times before we even make specific product recommendations, again, we're going to understand what the customer's requirements are. On top of those requirements, we need to understand any compliance or liability issues that the, the customer faces. And then uh, we're going to design a solution around that. But before we even get to that, I would say we, we spend a lot of time educating our customers on the, the different nuances to uh, you know, security applications. So a lot of our focus is on uh, photo ID systems, electronic visitor management, access control for the doors, and then obviously video surveillance. And, and most of our customers these days want to see all of those different applications coming together so that there's one place that they can... Uh, pull that data, look at audit logs, manage the system. And um, so when we do that, we've got that thought in mind. And then um, again, once we, we understand what the customer's needs are, then we're gonna start talking about specific products and again, give them an unbiased view. So that's our approach as an integrator is to bring multiple solutions to the table and then design what we think is the right fit for them. And when you talk about the, the integration, Bob, explain that specifically what Lensec does with uh, Elliot. Yeah, we actually um, um, have one of the really higher end uh, integrations with uh, one of the solutions that they represent with Badge Pass, and uh, we where we actually uh, affect the Badge Pass system as they affect our system as well which means that right through our uh, video management software, we can actually go in and uh, mine their metadata uh, from the access control events. And we can do searches in our archives based on a specific person, a specific door, uh, any any really trackable event through the access control system. Uh, And also to that point, we can get in and we can um, lock and unlock or pulse the doors as well so that you know, if you get somebody that comes in after hours and and uh, hits the intercom visitor button out front, uh, you know, we can create an event that uh, directs a, a message to a, a smartphone for a remote guard or somebody in the facility, and uh, they can look and see who it is at the front door, and then they can remotely unlock that door, uh, all all by virtue of the integration between the uh, video management system and the access control system. Okay. When we talk, Matt, about access control, can you explain more for people out there that might not understand it as well? 
Yeah, uh, physical access control to us uh, mostly pertains to securing, you know, entryways in a, a building. So uh, it could be the exterior doors, interior doors. Um, we do a lot with gates these days, vehicular gates. Um, but then outside of that, we also look at the, the non-traditional entry points. So in the healthcare environment, it could be drawers that contain uh, medication, read drawers that contain real high value dollar items. Um, so it could be the, the racking that uh, their servers are stored in inside of their IT closets. Um, it could be padlocks that they use to secure a chain link fence. So it's really anything that is focused on um, utilizing uh, some form of RFID technology, whether that's a uh, prox card, smart card, or even these days, a, uh, your mobile device is a digital credential to gain entry into um, a, some type of door or entry point. And when you talk about all those things, it's so important for data for a company, right? Or a school district or some sort of entity that have the ability to check those analytics from the cameras. So that connectivity, when you talk about access control and having the connectivity to video surveillance, it makes the system really move seamlessly, right? In a lot of ways, your security system. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even on top of that, again, uh, the, the value from an integration perspective is that, you know, when there's there's one place to, to query that data out. So if I need to run a report on Bob Brown, I can see every door that he accessed through. Or if I get a, a Bob loses his card and that card tries is used after hours to try to get gain a train to the, the facility. One, I, I know it's not going to be uh, that person's not going to be able to get into the building because it was deactivated in the access control system. But by the event notification set up with Linsec, I can trigger an automated email and text video clip of that person trying to utilize that card. Um, so the, the value of the integration there is we can look for anomalies and nor abnormal situations and proactively um, respond to those as opposed to going back and just looking at the unauthorized access attempt report within the access control system. That makes that makes complete sense. Bob, when you saw that specific thing, that's what really works well with, with Elliot in our solution, right? In that way of, of putting that all together. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, in, in the times prior to that kind of an integration, you usually would get a report, you know, an event like that that Matt alluded to happened after hours over a weekend. Uh, you know, a lot of times that was a Monday morning report that somebody looked at on their computer. And, you know, that was two days ago that happened. So, you know, it's pretty <laughs> not, not much you can do about it. Whereas now, you know, I can light somebody's, you know, cell phone up and they can see instantly that it's somebody that, you know, has been given that card that uh, from the person that was terminated and deactivated in the system. And I can forward that clip to the police department and, you know, we can put, have a high probability now of actually stopping somebody before they even leave the premise uh, with law enforcement. So it's, it's been a big boost to the safety and security really of the facilities. And that's where you see the specific security integrators like in Elliott data and the fact that you're able now to do so much more with video surveillance. And Matt, that's the other thing that's big about Elliot bringing that technology into the play where some people just have cameras, right, Matt, but you really can't do much more with cameras. You need all those things. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And so the, the thing that we love about the Linsec solution is, uh, you know, you guys are not a, a camera manufacturer, right? So you guys take an agnostic approach to it and you're focused on the video surveillance, the video management side of things. So, so there's a lot of value in, uh, you know, looking out for the customer's best interest instead of just trying to push a, a camera on a customer and then looking at the software as an afterthought. Exactly. And it's that, it's that kind of situation. So, Matt, we're talking off off air, offline about specifically enough how you, how you guys are, again, an essential business. You're still running during COVID-19 and the, the pandemic. How are you kind of being agile, kind of like our company in a way to keep things going during this time? Yeah, you know, so obviously there's, there's multiple facets to our, our business. Uh, so I'll start with the sales. From a sales perspective, um, you know, quite a bit has changed. Uh, not many of our customers or prospective customers these days are actually inside of their facilities, but they still have a need uh, and are planning on moving projects forward. Um, so in one sense, it's certainly helped because a lot of our customers have been able to focus um, on the projects that maybe uh, 
when they were dealing with uh, interaction with uh, coworkers or customers coming into their facilities um, may have slowed the, the projects down. Um, but in one sense, again, it, it's helped them prioritize the projects, focus on the projects. And so it's shifted from a sales perspective of doing in-person, on-site walkthroughs with customers. We're still doing a few of those, uh, but most of them these days are being done remotely. So we're using some really cool tools um, we had been using prior, more just from a uh, project management perspective, uh, where we can pinpoint camera locations and uh, review those more in depth with the customer. I think in the past, a lot of the customers um, for better or worse, I mean, fortunately for us, they, they trust us and they, right. they kind of took for uh, granted whatever camera we would recommend is, is what they were going to choose. Now we're able to really educate them on the, the different nuances to all of the different cameras that are out there. And I can look at one camera manufacturer. And if you look at the spec sheet for a three megapixel camera, there's 20 different options. So we can really spend time talking now about these are the differences of the different models. These are how this particular camera is going to meet your needs. And then, um, and again, in the past, the, the customer really just wasn't right. that concerned about it, but um, now they are. And so it's helping us to better design the, the, the project and make sure that we're really achieving not just the short-term strategy, uh, but their long-term strategy is they want to grow their projects beyond the first phase. And growing it is, is an important thing. You don't stop a certain amount of cameras. Yeah. Explain that in, in certain ways, then I'll add more to Bob explaining it too. That just because you have a certain amount of cameras doesn't mean now we, we figured out, hey, we need some more, right? Why do you see lots of projects grow with cameras? The same could be said for access control. I don't know that we've had uh, many customers. If, if we do, it's less than a handful that are using the same amount of cameras and the same amount of doors that they're controlling six months to a year after when they first implemented doors, mm -hmm. especially in city government uh, applications. You know, typically we're starting off at a, a city hall or a public works building. And then as de other departments get word that another department has access control and cameras, now they want it. And so it truly becomes a, a citywide initiative. Um, and the same could be said for school districts where we start off at a, a middle school and then other middle schools find out about it and elementary schools find out about it. So, yeah, I mean, they're, the projects just are constantly growing. Um, and so, again, we want to make sure that when we're making that recommendation, we have that thought in mind in that first phase is we don't want to pigeonhole a customer to where they don't have room to grow and expand on the road. And that's because it, it different. You expand the building, you look at certain gaps in your security. And Bob, explain that more, what Matt was talking about with expansion of cameras. And you don't and a lot of deployments you see as well that happens. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the previous access control, you know, might have just been a generic keypad that was put on a computer room door or a boiler room or and you know, um, you know, dozens and dozens of people know that code. And uh, today, you know, implementing a higher level of access control, first of all, you can, through the permission sets of the programming of the access control system, you can actually enable certain users or groups of users through those doorways. And then you can back that up with, with a recognition uh, from the video system. So a uh, very common practice is matching a camera uh, view of an access control door so that you actually, you know, are seeing also that it was truly Matt Bidos that went through that door, not somebody that Matt might have given his card to. Uh, so it's it's a very way, good way to go back and, and validate uh, actual events uh, and, and add uh, substantial credibility to it. You know, it's the old axiom in, in security. You always want to know the who, the when, and the where. And really, um, you know, tying video and access control together is a natural way to answer those three questions with, with the highest level of confidence. That's so true. And it's, it's so important. And the more you try to keep your building secure, you have to do those things and, or your facility or certain things. And with COVID-19, Matt, you were talking a little bit about that, but the situation now is more and more people are concerned once they go back to the offices, right? Once they have people in different facilities, what have you heard in that conversation? 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's still pretty fresh um, where our offices are. Um, we are still in shelter in place. Um, so quite a few of our customers have not determined what their, what their strategy is going to be. Okay. Um, as of today, within the last few hours um, here locally in the St. Louis area, we just uh, were given word that in two weeks they'll start allowing non-essential businesses to reopen. So uh, customers obviously have been planning, uh, but with no timelines in mind, uh, they haven't shared real many, very many um, specifics about their plans. I, I do know that as we are working with customers and we're talking to customers that, that are still in business, the ones that have their facilities open, they're very concerned about uh, monitoring who's coming into the building, whether it's just employees or contractors, or if again, it's a public facility like a city hall, how they're going to restrict access into those buildings. Yes. And then, um, you know, are they going to do temperature tracking? Do they have a need to electronically document the temperature of everybody that's came into the facility from probably more a liability perspective than anything? Uh, but then if something does uh, end up being a uh, uh, the center point or hotspot for uh, uh, COVID, uh, at least they, they can document who was inside of the building. So, so that's what we we're hearing the most um, discussion about is just knowing who's inside of the building at any given time. And see, that's a great point you're talking about, Matt, because of masks. Some places are going to have that you have to wear masks in the building. Some places are going to have certain things, especially we talked about, I was talking to the uh, president of the AFT about this. Again, when schools open back up, the surveillance is going to have to improve greatly, especially now with contact tracing and different things. We're going to have to see specifically who has COVID and who doesn't have it. Even though we're opening up, it's a new normal, Matt. And I think that you're seeing that firsthand from when you're going to talk to your customers more and more, that they're going to want more and more analytics, more and more situations, because they want to, to let their customers know they're safe or they're the people who come into their building are safe. And that's going to be a big, big concern, especially with certain states and how they're opening up. You know, one point, too, that uh, actually, Matt, uh, one of your guys, uh, Zach, uh, had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago that he involved us in in a presentation to uh, a, a potential customer. And it was specifically what we're talking about here. That was a company that had a hazardous materials area and they wanted to be able to validate that the, their employees that were entering that hazmat, they call it hazardous materials area, were actually outfitted properly. They were wearing the proper protective equipment. And the only way to really do that is to take a, a movie of it, take a video of it. And so, you know, we triggered that uh, based on the access control entry and the identification of A, the area that was the hazmat area and B, the person that went through there. And then we have the video supporting that they were properly protected. So great application in, in lieu of today's, you know, world. So. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, especially at times when we have to figure out. So I could see bars and restaurants seeing this as a great solution, both of our solutions and the fact that, guess what? They're going to have to do far more surveillance than they used to. A lot of businesses, Matt, and I think that you've seen that are going to because video surveillance is going to be so important to make because you can't have eyes on every customer, or every person that enters a building. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I mean, more and more of our discussions about video surveillance um, aren't necessarily about security. They're more about liability and protecting themselves. And so, um, yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. What liability are you seeing? Have you heard more about that in the situation without mentioning any customers you're dealing with or different things about the liability if you're not doing certain things, meeting the state guidelines? Yeah, no. So and that's not necessarily specific to COVID. Uh, you know, we have tons of customers these days that are putting cameras in because they want to protect themselves. They have customers that are in their facilities. They're, they're claiming that there was a, they slipped on the, the floor um, nine months ago and now they need back surgery. And um, so it, it's those ty types of instances. Um, again, until facilities open up, I guess we don't really know what the liability is. Um, but again, I think a lot of these, these organizations that we're working with, they want to um, do their due diligence and put procedures in place to, to protect themselves. 
Phase one, you're phase right. two, phase three, phase four, Bob's what's happening in Pennsylvania for us and specifically enough. And the our governor says if certain cases come up, then they're going to close us down again. So there's it depends on each state and for our, our worldwide audience watching Lensec Live and also Facebook Live of Lensec, they have to understand and syndication. It's going to be different everywhere, and that's going to be the, that's going to be the challenge, Bob, isn't it? In a lot of ways, for it every is. person looking for surveillance, it is. And just so so I don't forget about mentioning it, you know, one of the things that uh, Matt just mentioned is, you know, they do a lot with safety issues where somebody had a slip and fall, and then, you know, nine months later they hear about, you know, oh, you know, they're they're coming after them because they want compensated for the back surgery and lost work and all that. And one of the great things we, we offer in our in our video solution is whenever there's an event like that, you have an opportunity uh, to go in and uh, lock that video of that event and indefinitely retain it in storage because a lot of times you don't know if that's gonna if that somebody is gonna come back nine months or a year later and and um, lo and behold you don't have the video in storage anymore. So, you know, one of the best practices that comes out of those safety scenarios is whenever you have an event, it should be policy to mm -hmm. automatically uh, create a, a video lock of that event so that you've got, you retain that until you're sure that you won't have a future need to defend yourself. It's an exciting way to use the technology in this day and age. Yeah, and you never know if the person was even in your facility, right? Mm -hmm. So the cameras can always be proved to, to, to validate person you know who claims they were there was was actually there right that's right you know, it's one thing if it's an employee and you can track that through the access control system but it's a whole other story if you're a public um, facility or public organization where your doors are always open and where you got visitors that are coming in and out of the, the building right one of the things that i wanted to cover for sure is and you kind of explained this but let's go now with Three definitions in the security deployment in a lot of ways. You have the security integrator, you have a manufacturer, and you have the customer. How do they work hand in hand at Elliott Data in that way? With the customer that potentially wants video surveillance, the manufacturers, and yourself? Sure. Yeah, so we are suddenly the conduit there. Um, again, we do a lot of the, um, the planning with the customer, again, understanding the needs, designing the system, getting buy-in from the customer, um, as we're going through that project management or before the project management and the, the project design phase, that's when we start engaging our different partners um, like Linsec. And we'll, we'll make uh, reach outs. So as a great example is recently we worked on a number of projects um, where the states um, here in Missouri has got certain requirements for data storage and video retention and frames per second and image quality and things like that. So we'll leverage our partners uh, that are experts on uh, the camera sides for certain things that require, um, uh, I guess, unique uh, type of circumstances without going into specific markets. Uh, but then we can rely on a company like Linsec when it comes to calculating the, the video storage that we need and making a recommendation on the, the video recorder. Um, you know, telling you guys that we need 50 cameras stored for 60 days at 15 frames per second. Uh, we leverage the experts um, to, to kind of back up and validate our thoughts. And then um, again, we incorporate that into our project design and then we review that with the customer. And to, to again, really get their buy-in. They're the ones that ultimately have to make the decision on whether they want the, the good, better or best solution for their environment. And that's interesting. You talk about that, how you're the conduit and Bob to kind of talk about specifically enough, a great partnership, a great partnership between the manufacturer, which is you and the, again, and the integrator is so important in having a successful deployment. It is, it would be impossible for a company like ourselves. And I'm sure most manufacturers to, to be able to, understand the specific needs of, of the individual customers. So it's a natural for the integrator who, to, to be that person and really to, to be the uh, ombudsman or the advocate for their end user. And to represent those requirements, as Matt so uh, clearly pointed out, even to the point where, you know, what, what the expectation or the requirement might be for video storage. So it, it, 
really we rely on the quality of our integrators to because you know uh, nothing could be worse than an integrator that doesn't do a very good survey or analysis or understanding really of a customer's needs and then you know and then the system is deployed and the customer uh, is dissatisfied early on because it's not meeting an unstated or unasked expectation. So we really value integrators like uh, Elliot that do the, do the extra work, the due diligence, and really properly understand all the expectations. It makes for the happiest customers and the best reputation for, for all concerned. Absolutely. Hey, I- yeah, and if I could add to that, I mean, the one thing that it, that working with the manufacturer provides both the integrator and the customer is you guys are covering a, a wider presence, you're covering the entire country, all of North America. So it's good to see what trends that you guys may be seeing from similar type of customers and markets in other parts of the country um, that maybe haven't moved to the Midwest yet, or maybe maybe we are ahead of the curve, and um, you know, uh, taking trends to the to the coast. So. Using your guys' resources on what you're seeing in, in other parts of the country are, are certainly beneficial to us here. All right. Well, I would, Matt, I would agree. Stories, uh, people love to hear stories. You know, how, how did yes. they solve that problem? And, and, yeah. uh, and, and it is. It's, it gives everything more credibility. It's the anecdotal information, and we love to share that with our partners uh, as well. So thanks for bringing that forward. And Matt, where's the best place we can connect and learn more about? Elliot Data. Yeah. Uh, so our website, um, ElliotData.com, E-L-L-I-O-T-T-D-A-T-A.com. Awesome. And socials, do you know where best place connecting social-wise? Yeah, we're all over the place. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn. Yeah, you, uh, you pretty much, you, for, there's a social media site. I'm sure we've got a page for it. So Exactly. And you serve what areas just for people that are watching and listening? Yeah, so there's a few different divisions of our company. Uh, for the most part, uh, we're again in about a three to four hour radius of St. Louis and Memphis, Tennessee. So we cover parts of five states in the uh, the Midwest and the Mid South for the uh, identity slash security side of our business. All right. Well, it was great talking to you. And again, the thing that's changing again is involving this remote and how people are going to get back to work and call someone like Matt when you're ready to get back to work, especially when you want the better video surveillance for your business or your operation. So again, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Bob. Great talking to you guys. All right. Take care, guys. All right, guys. That was LensEc Live, everybody. 